Israel. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh being the name of God, meaning He exists. Bahashem means in the name, and Yahweh Shai is Yahweh's son, meaning He saves or He delivers. So come save the nation of Israel, Yahweh Shai. Hasten the day. So we, I'm going to get some more information in these books. Uh, this is just a something to bring out while you're out on the street and to be able to link these books historically together. And you should do that with all your studies. Do it with um, the good scholarship. You know, out of the two or three witnesses, the same rules apply when you're going to the world, right? Because, you know, that the things you read from the scriptures, got to stay in scripture in context, but you apply them to your life. This is the Arabs pushed their way out of Arabia in the 7th century. In the year 640 A.D., right? Because the 7th century is from 600 A.D. to 700 A.D. So that would make up the 7th century. So that's why they came in the year 640 A.D. They attacked, and century means a span of 100 years. You know, just for people who don't know. You know, people may not know. In the year 60, 640 A.D., they attacked Egypt and continued across Africa. Then a Jewish queen named Daya. Kahina organized an army consisting of Jews and Berbers in order to stop the penetration of the Muslims in North Africa. This queen vanquished the Arabs and the people of Africa rejoiced in her victory. So she won the first war. Years later, the Mohammedans fought the army of this Jewish queen once more and she was defeated. She, w she was defeated the second time because of the jealousies of different people in various tribes. Having become disguised her son turned Muslim and participated in the Islamic conquest of Spain in the year 711 A.D. So, 711 A.D. Right, so let's read that in here. All right, 711 A.D. Let's read that in this book, if we can find it. Right. And it reads... Fucking... So like it is real, hold on. And here it go. Dang. Thought I was closer. Okay, here it go. Racial. This is chapter five of the book called Nation Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. And it reads. It's on page 55. While white vandals were pouring into Africa in the fourth and fifth centuries, Africans continued to arrive in southern Europe, chiefly as slaves. But in 711 A.D., they came in as conquerors. Crossing into Spain, they captured Gibraltar and defeated the Goths, white Germanic invaders of three centuries earlier. Their commander, Tariq, a Negro, gave his name to Gibraltar, formerly known, it was the former name of Gibraltar was Kelp. Uh, and Gibraltar means um, Mountain of Tariq. Uh, he named it after himself. The, these Africans were Moors, sometimes called uh, Slaki. These Africans were Moors, sometimes called Arabs because of their language, right? Because they, because the Muslims, we just read over here, came in and conquered them, right? To the earlier Greeks, the Moors were a black or dark people, Moros, right? And to the Romans, Moris, a black woolly-haired people. That's why they called the land Morocco or Mauritania, known synonymously as Ethiopes, Niger, which means Negro, and Negro means black, and Afer, African, where you get the name Africa. Even as late as the 5th century AD, Pro Procopus, Roman historian, calls the people of Morocco black, right? So, um, now let's get some more history. To, just to prove, just to have a quick one-two when you're out there teaching on the street. Um, here it go. This is, um, now this is when they got ex expelled from Spain. The expulsion of the Jews from Spain and Portugal, it was... A.D. 1492, January 2nd, and this is page uh, 115. It was A.D. 1492, January, January 2nd, when the Moorish stronghold of Granada, more means black, surrendered to the armies of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. For the first time since the year 711, all of Spain was in Christian hands. The decree to expel the Jews from Spain was, designed, was signed on March 31st in one of the corridors of the Great Alhambra. Like we said in the video, a corridor is a long hallway with many doors on every side, on each side of the hallway. The place of the Moorish kings of Granada, Alhambra, the, which is the place of the, the palace, which is the palace of the Moorish kings of Granada, 
The reason given for the expulsion of the Jews was that it was thought that they corrupted the Morenos, black people, and it, and they and the Morenos are Jews converted to Christianity in this context. They corrupted them how by privately encouraging them in disloyalty to Christianity. Which is what we're doing now, like I said in the last video. The ultimatum given to the Jews expired August 1st, 1492. But the last group of Jews did not leave until August 2nd, 1492. This date is a strange coincidence. Uh, what did I want? Um, what I wanted from this was... What did I want? Oh, well, I'm going to keep... Well, I'm going to start from... I'm going to read from the, the third paragraph. In order to satisfy Queen Isabella of Spain... Or if you all want to read that, you can just pause this video and read it, but... Is what I wanted. In order to satisfy Queen Isabella of Spain, King Manuel of Portugal promulgated a royal decree expelling the Jews and Moors from his country in 1496. But when you're done, you know, pausing it, listen to what I'm saying now. The Jews who were expelled from Spain and Portugal were scattered throughout the Mediterranean coast. It is estimated that over 100,000 Jews departed from Spain and Portugal during the persecution and the expulsion. Some of these Jews went to Northern Europe Italy and Turkey, right? So let's stop there. And, and then it says, but most of them, uh, it says, but most of them went to Muslim countries in, in Northern and Western Africa. Because remember, the Arabs invaded in 640 AD. So let's get, um, but I wanted to focus on what it says. Some of these Jews went to North, Northern Europe, Italy, and Turkey, right? So this is page, um, if y'all can see it, this is page 130 of the of this book. And it reads, the Eastern Jews, people who went to the East, Europe, right, uh, who, who settled in Austria, Poland, and Russia were Negroid too. Count Adam Gorowski, which is this guy right here, right? Adam Gorowski. Adam Gorowski was a P Polish-born author who immigrated to the United States in 1849 during colonial times, right? So this is what he says, if I can find it. Page. Here you go. This is what he says. Uh, Adam Gorowski of Poland, who visited the United States in 1847, said the Jews of his country strongly resemble, resembled American mulattoes. That, and you just read that. It was so bring this out when you're on the street. Adam Gorowski of Poland, who visited the United States in 1857, said the Jews of his country strongly resembled American mulattoes so there were jews in poland number numbers of jews he said have the greatest resemblance to the american mulattoes um solo solo complexion thick lips crisp black hair now let's get you let's see what a mulatto looks like right this is now let's read this left upper lower mulattoes this is a painting by Albrecht Durer in 1471 from 1528 going deeper. This is what mulattoes look like, right? These are what the mulattoes look like. It says left, upper, and lower mulattoes by Albrecht Durer. These are mulattoes. Look like your present day Negroes, right? So let's go back to the um to this book. You know, it's enough. So you see, it's one thing to read. You got to get all the information out of these books to be able to present them in a solid way while you're out there. Quick. You know, got to be quick to sort, but mostly your ammo should be coming out of the Bible. But this is just, you know, for fun. Numbers of Jews who said, um, numbers of Jews, he said, uh, Adam Gorowski, he said, have the greatest resemblance to the American mulattoes, solid complexion, thick lips, crisp black hair. Of all the Jewish uh, population scattered over the globe or globe, one fourth dwells in Poland. I am... I am therefore well acquainted with their features. On my arrival in this country, America, I took every light colored mulatto for a Jew, right? Now, um, let me see. Now it says we were we scattered. Now, let's get this um, scripture right here. Deuteronomy 24. I mean 28. Scatter. All right. This is Deuteronomy twenty. This is Deuteronomy um, twenty twenty-eight verse sixty-four. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood, Christianity, right? 
because we was remember we we convert what they kicked us out for secretly converting people from Christianity to being a Jew. So what do they have in Christianity? Wood, and then and other gods in stone. What is the what are the Arabs uh uh um what are the Arabs worship the Kaaba stone? And we're gonna get it out of this book, man. Right? It all comes together when you do the research. You know, this, this information coming out like a flood, man. So. You know, this is your chance to get right, man. You only got one chance. You know, you know, you got to put the lust, lust of the flesh away. This uh, information coming like a flood. Okay, this is here we go. They were pagans, then converted to Judaism during the time of the construction of the first temple. And they were Jews from that, that time to the year 622 AD. As the tradition says, when they became Muslims by the sword of Muhammad, right? They became, Jews became Muslim by none other of the sword of Muhammad. So you black people in Arab, Arabic religions need to get out of there. Malcolm X was wrong, but he knew he was the Jews. Before the introduction of the three influential religions in Arabia, Judaism, Christianity, and Muhammadism, right? Judaism comes from those fake Jews, Christianity comes from the white people, and Muhammadism comes from the Arabs. The Arabs worship the stars, idols, and the Kaaba stone, right? Now, let's see what uh, Muhammad did with that Kaaba stone. Did he get rid of it? Right? Did he get rid of it? The answer is no. You're going to find out he did it. In order to win the pagans um, into the church, Christianity adopted many barbaric cu customs and tra traditions like Christmas and other things. Likewise, Muhammad, to gain the loyalty of the pagan Arabs, adopted many of their beloved customs. The Kaaba stone an idol was received was to receive high regard in the new religion. Also, the pagan temple at Mecca was to remain as a holy site. So, the Kaaba stone, right? So that's what they worship. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone, right? Talking about Christianity and the Kaaba stone. You gotta get that. Um, you gotta get out of that. And they was mixing it. Let's see if I can find the scripture. Let me see. Sorry, right. Since I rap. Bear with me. So this, they was mixing it with uh, pagan uh, things. Now this is Ecclesiastes chapter 34 verse 4. Of an unclean thing, what can be cleansed? And from the, that thing which is false, what truth can come? So you can't be mixing barbaric customs with the Bible, right? You can't be trying to mix things to make it pure. It says of an unclean thing, what can be cleansed? And from that thing which is false, what truth can come? Right. So, you know, you got to bring those things out, man. Right. So I just wanted to get uh, get that and bring that out. But, you know, all praise to the most high that the truth is coming out. And I say, Kwam Yasharala to the nation of Israel rising up. So rise up, Israel, get your scholarly, scholarly hat on and battle these goddamn demons who've been hiding these things away. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, when you least expect it, this truth won't be out there anymore and people be searching to find it pursuant to Amos 8 and 11. So, uh, and I'm going to get that before I go. Uh, all right. And this, and it reads, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Right? This truth's going to be hidden. Well, I'm going to go back. I'm, here we go. And let's get that. Behold, the days, okay, verse 12, and they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east, and they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. And with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, all praise to the Most High, and I pray for the elect um, and the sincere Akim, you know, pushing this word in sincerity and truth as always. I ain't saying nothing new, right? Love y'all, Israel. All right, shalom. Shalom, I should say.